Gary Piekowski was born on December 24, 1966, in Syracuse, New York. His dad served in the Navy, and his mother was an accountant. He had two younger brothers and one older sister. Before he was involved in the Air Force, he was a paperboy when he was 10 or 12. And when he was older, he worked at a PNC and Friendly's ice cream shop. He first thought about joining the service when he was in community college. Working three jobs and partying a lot, he decided to straighten his life out by joining the service. For him, the choice was easy when he looked at the Air Force, and it looked the best. His parents were very supportive of him joining the Air Force. During earlier days of training for him, he said it was like... One thing we had in common as soon as we got to the Lackland Air Force Base where our basic training began, it was hell on earth. Everybody was just... Boom, so we were all in it together, which is kind of cool. So we we're all getting our heads shaved together, doing everything together, and that what kind of brings you together as, you know, a military team. He also told us that he's very lucky that he didn't have to do any physical training like what the Marines and Army need to do. In training, he specialized in F4 and EC-130s. To him, training brought everyone together. To get to a senior airman, he said, he had to work hard, read, and study, which to some people, it may seem like it may not be worth it, but in the long run, it is worth it. With being a senior airman, he had to watch over many people of all ages and had to keep them in line. Some of the people he was looking over were just kids, three years older than what I am. Having kids that age in the war is a struggle, keeping them in line and making sure they do what they are supposed to do. Gary served in six different bases. He had never witnessed any casualties, but once there was a scud missile that hit one of his bases. When he was off duty, he enjoyed the travel and party. He stayed in contact with his family through mail, not email, just regular mail. The hardest conditions he had to work in was negative 30 degrees in Uzbekistan and 120 degrees in Arizona. He is unsure whether the deserts of Kuwait affected him. He just knows that he took a lot of pills in Kuwait and he has some things going on with his body right now. One of the biggest things that he learned was that you get what you put in. His service changed his thoughts on war. Gary Piekowski is a very proud member of the Air Force and mentioned many times if you're thinking about joining a service, go into the Air Force. He made it known that the military shouldn't be looked at in a bad way. It's a good thing for people to come in to see the world, get education, and some people are just patriotic to be there. With that, he says you want to stand and respect the flag because you just have a special bond after you're done serving. He wasn't just in the Gulf War. He was also over in Uzbekistan, where he worked on a lot of planes that would go around little towns picking up every technology device signal that they could find, whether it was garage door opener signals or something even bigger, like a bomb. Since these planes were picking up so many signals that may be so important, he had to make sure that the, the planes were repaired and ready to go because they may miss something that they need. After the war, he came home with some medals. One medal came from Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia offered to pay every U.S. soldier $10,000, but President Bush denied it. He also came home with some coins, not just any coins. These coins were impo important to the men that served. They would play some games to see who would buy drinks. A as shown, Gary showed us one of these games. The coining, like, like the coining. Yeah, I got. I had a bunch of coins, and then it's a. Um, oh, you bring them? No, I didn't. Oh, what does it's a customary. It's customary in the military how everybody has like a, everybody every squadron. I've been in so many squadrons. When you're assigned in the military in the Air Force, you're assigned to a squadron. I was in like the 52nd um, Tactical Fighter Wing, you know, and then you're in a that's a wingman squadron and stuff. And everybody has these little coins. They're called. This isn't appropriate, no, no. but that's just the thought of it. But this is. It's a coin. It's a coin-shaped object. Actually, it's you cannot. It, we have rules. This is actually a little. It's kind of like a game, but it's 
These are called round metal art objects. RMO, round metal objects. You cannot call these coins. If you call them a coin, you owe everybody a drink. Okay? It, it, it's not a drinking game, but it's every every squadron has these and everything. And it, it's uh we have a little rule card I got very early in my career, but um it's also called a challenge coin. So you said about if I keep in touch with all my buddies and stuff. So it happened I go meet a couple buddies and we're wherever we're at, we have a coin on us, we throw a coin down. Okay? My other two buddies, they have a coin on them, they throw it down. If they don't have a coin, they buy around it. Just how it is. When he came home, Gary was well received by his community. He also adjusted very well back to his regular life. He later on joined the Air Force Sergeant Association, the VA, and the VAFW. Mr. Piotowski taught us a lot of things that we would have never known about the service, and also we learned more about him and how his life was before and after serving. It was very neat interviewing a veteran, especially like Mr. Piotowski, for a project. We thank everyone for their service, and especially Gary Piotowski for his service.